Hello Internet and welcome to another video of my video tutorials. This time I'm going to explain to you Euclid's algorithm for finding the greatest common divisor, the GCD. In the beginning I'm going to explain what the GCD is and then I'm going to introduce to you quick, quick, quickly what is known as the modulo operator uh, or the, the mod function or the mod method, uh, the mod operator in general and then uh, we'll go straight to explaining how the Euclid's algorithm works for finding the GCD. Euclid's algorithm is used very very widely for computing or for finding the greatest common divisor. That's why I thought I will uh, uh, I should record re record record a video and explain it to you. Enough talking. Let's go back. Let's go straight to the slides. Now the GCD, the greatest common divisor of two integers, is the largest integer that can divide both integers. You certainly are familiar with uh, division, with integer division. I explained that in one of my videos. You can look it up in my uh, YouTube channel. Or oh, what I'm going to do is actually I will leave the link to that video underneath this video in the comments area. So the greatest common divisor, the GCD of two numbers, of two integers, is the largest integer that can divide both integers. The integer 1 has only one divisor, i.e. itself. Any positive integer will have at least two divisors, one and itself. When I say at least, it means it can have actually more than that. But remember, any positive integer has at least two divisors, one and itself. For example, if we factorize the number 360, uh, um, then we can find it's a result of 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. To demonstrate, let's do that. So we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. That's 360. And then the number 42, it's three, 2 times 3 times uh, um, 7 and we get 42. Now if I want to compute the GCD of 360 and 42 then I factorize them. I'm, ass I'm assuming you are familiar with factorization. I factorize them and then um, find the overlap. So the overlap between 360 and 42 now is 2. Here is repeated once and the 3. What that means is the GCD is the result of the multiplication of the overlapping factors between the two numbers, which is in our case now 2 times 3 is actually 6. So the GCD of 360 and 42 is 6. Again, I'm assuming you're familiar with factorization. Uh, another thing that I wanted, to, I wanted to introduce here, although I'm assuming you're familiar with it, you must have seen this before if you do programming, the modulo operator. The modulo, sometimes called modulus operation, finds the remainder of division of one number by another. By the way, the material here is from Wikipedia. You can find the Wikipedia article on modular operation, Wikipedia articles on GCD, and Wikipedia articles on Euclid's algorithm. Now, what that means is, given two numbers, A and B, the modulo, or the, mod, or the modulo, or A modulo B, sometimes abbreviate, abbreviated as A mod B, or maybe A percentage B, if you're familiar with uh, programming languages for Java for example then what what that does is it, it returns the remainder of the Euclidean division Euclidean division of A by B Euclid, Euclidean division is about integer division where we don't have fractions but we have a quotient and a remainder I do have my own video on that I'll leave the link to that video underneath this video now, for instance if we say 5 mod 2, it will, it will evaluate to 1, so the result would be 1. Why? Because uh, 5 divided by 2 leaves a quotient of 2 and a remainder of 1. So 5 equals 2 times 2 plus 1. If you remember, b times q plus r. So b here is 2, q is 2, and 1 is r. That's the remainder, that's what we are interested in at the moment, and that's what the modular function or the modular operator returns. Likewise, if we do it for 9 mod 3, then we end up with 0 because 9 equals 3 times 3 plus 0. Now, Euclid's algorithm for finding the GCD is based on this idea of the modular operator. Yes, it's based on that. And what it says is, given two integers, m and n, let's say, yes, m and n, two integers, m and n, um, 
if we want to compute the GCD of M and N, then we check this point actually should come before. So what? I'm sorry. What we can do here is um, we check the value of of N of the second number. Yes, this should be there. Uh, we check the value of the second number. One second, please. Yes. Now, again, just to repeat that if we want to find the GCD using Euclid's algorithm, the way it works is as follows. Given two integers, m and n, um, we check the, the value of the second integer of n, the value of n. If n is 0, then the result is m. So if n is 0, then the greatest common divisor of the two integers is actually m. However, if n is not 0, then what we do is we find the value of or the remainder of m divided by n. We find we use the mod function or the mod operator now, as you can see here, m mod n. We find r, the remainder of m by n. And then we repeat the check, but now by replacing m by n, so n goes into, into place goes in m's place and then n is replaced by r. If that's confusing let's see the explanation here. Euclid's algorithm for computing GCD of m and n works as follows. Step 1 we check the value of n the second number. If it's 0 then we return m as the answer. If not then we move on to step 2. What we do is we find the remainder of m by n assign so divide m by n and assign the value of the remainder to r i.e. r equals m mod n or as we said before if you use Java or any program other some other program, programming languages then there's actually percentage so r equals m mod n and now what we do is we actually replace m with n and n with r i.e. the GCD now becomes instead of GCD of m and n it becomes GCD of n and r and then we go back to uh, step 1 and check the value of n if it's 0 return m if not, uh, uh, continue by finding the mod and replacing the M with N and N with R. One thing to notice here that uh, in the beginning here we're assuming the two input values are called M and N. So we, if we go back again now with N and R, when we reach here, N will be M and R will be N. Just to repeat, I'll make that clear by showing you this simple Java function or Java method that computes the GCD using uh, GCD of two integers using Euclid's algorithm. So find GCD int m int n. The base case is we check the value of n. If it's zero, then we return m. If you remember from here. And if not, then we compute the remainder in Java. In Java, the uh, mod function is the percentage operator. So we just with the percentage symbol. So we just say int r equals m percentage n. R now is the remainder of M by N. Uh, I'm printing out the mod value here just to debug. And then we call the same function now, but now with N and R. With N as the first argument or the first parameter and R as the second parameter instead of M and N in place of M and N as we explained in this step here. And then we go back to step number one. One thing I want you to notice here that this is recursion so the function is calling itself I'm assuming that you are familiar with recursion in programming languages enough talking let me uh, uh, execute the program I've put it into a little program so we put the first number which is mentioned before 360 we used in the slides the second one is 42 and we find that the GCD is actually 6 if I use for example 42 and 360 now so the other way around in the beginning remember that we use the larger number as the first number whereas now we're using um, the larger number as the second number and again we get the same value by the way the GCD of a value on itself so 340 for example and 340 is what what do you expect is actually the number itself so, so the GCD of the number by itself is the number itself this is some this is one of the characteristics or the properties of the values of GCD. 
Uh, what else? If we, for example, try to use negative number, so three had minus three hundred forty, and then the, the uh, other number is ninety, then the GCD is nine. If we use it the other way around, so we use, for example, n uh, minus ninety and three hundred forty, then again now I'm sorry, here is negative ten, and now it's positive ten. If we do, for example, if the number is zero, by the way, I know. So by the way, here I'm actually uh, printing out the result of the mod so um, basically if you remember when we said we replace m by n and n by r we can work that out here as you can see so what in the beginning we have two numbers now minus 90 and 340 the mod or the remainder of minus 90 divided by 340 is minus 90 so what happens now is this is m this is n in the next step now this becomes n and this becomes n this is the remainder but now it becomes n so in the next iteration when we loop again when the recursion loops again we now have 340 and minus 90 as m and n and the remainder of that is 70 now what happens is m becomes minus 90 and n becomes 70 uh, and then we call it with minus, nine, minus 90 and 70 the remainder of minus 90 and 70 is minus 20 and now m becomes 70 n becomes minus 20 which is the remainder now we call again 70 and minus 9 minus 20 the remainder of 70 and minus 20 is 10 so now we have we call with minus 20 and 10 and then the remainder of minus 20 and 10 is 0 then we stop and now because the remainder is 0 then when we call again now uh, m is 10 and n is 0 if you remember the condition here if n is 0 return m or from this slide here if n is 0 then the GCD of m and n is m then what happens is the GCD now is actually 10 as you can see let's test it one more time maybe we give it uh, even large numbers minus whatever and another number then the GCD is minus 3 as you can see it works that out now if the GCD of any two numbers is 1 then those two numbers are said to be co-prime or relatively prime I have my own video on co-primeness and how to tell whether two numbers are co-prime or not you can search for that in my youtube channel remember I will put the link to my video on integer division and on Euclidia division underneath this video Thank you very much indeed for watching and I'll see you in one of my next videos.